Western society requires clear communication. That is foundational to an effective message. We've all heard excellent content and our minds have drifted because the structure of the sermon wasn't clear. Whenever you're listening to a message and you find yourself drifting, it's often because the speaker has wandered off topic or there isn't a clear structure. I'd like to walk you through some of the most helpful sermon structures I've discovered in my reading for effective communication. First, here is the most basic sermon structure around. This can be used for most portions of the Bible, though I haven't found it to work very well for narrative. First, you introduce the idea. You state the idea. This is your thesis. You state it clearly and specifically and then repeat it. Next, you explain the idea, you illustrate the idea, you apply the idea, and you conclude the idea. I have found this sermon structure works well for most of the Bible. It works well with epistle, psalms, and prophecy. Brian Chapel, in his second edition of Christ-Centered Preaching, explains this method most clearly. Second, here is a great narrative structure. It's quite simple and straightforward. You ask a question, you take the audience and the listeners on a quest, and towards the end of the sermon you lead them to a discovery. David Inyer in Creative Anticipation explains this method. Another helpful sermon structure comes from Andy Stanley. This also works well with narratives. First is the me portion. It is focused around orientation and common ground with the audience. Second is we. This is an identification of a felt need. Third is the God section. This is the textual portion of the sermon. This portion of the sermon should also have a substructure that reflects the text. Next is the us section. This is the inspirational component of the message. What we say here is, here's where we could go, or here's what this would look like if. And the final section of this sermon structure is the you section. This is the application portion of the sermon. You offer your audience a specific issue to do, think about, believe, or feel. Andy Stanley's simplicity is incredibly helpful in that sermon structure. Ken Edwards, in his book, Effective First-Person Biblical Preaching, lays out the following structure, which works well with narratives or portions of Scripture that have a narrative behind them, such as a proverb. First, you have summer one. This is when life is nice and everything is as it should be. Next comes fall. Something happens that makes this nice, picture-perfect world not so good. Then is winter. This is when the reality of the fall is felt and it's a very dark and cold time in the sermon and portion of the narrative. In the middle of winter is when the solution found through God's saving acts appear. It may stay winter for some time after God's saving act appeared. After winter, as you would expect, comes spring. The saving act of God starts to bring forth new life and you describe what this looks like in the lives of the biblical story as well as your audience. The final section is summer two, and this is when life returns to a normal, peaceful way of living that it should be. There should be a flashback to the beginning as well. Besides Kent Edwards' books, the book Save the Cat by Blake Snyder is helpful to understand how to tell a story well. He was a screenwriter and takes that perspective. The last sermon structure we will look at comes from Paul Scott Wilson. Here is how this one works. First, there is trouble in the text. You explain the text and the problem found there. Next, you move to trouble in the world. You make a parallel, a bridge from then to now. Then, the third portion of the sermon structure, you go back to the text to find the solution, which is God's grace and God's work and then you move to God's grace in the world. This sermon structure is very helpful in terms of relevance.